Today we're going to do a little compare and contrast. We're diving into how quality of life stacks up in different parts of the world by looking at some key indicators in both developing and more developed countries. Let's get started. To make this comparison, we're going to look at three countries. Australia, a highly developed country, Mali, a developing country in West Africa, and Bangladesh, a developing country in South Asia. By comparing these countries, we can see just how much quality of life can vary around the globe. First up, let's talk about infant and maternal mortality rates. These indicators tell us how many infants die before their first birthday, and how many women die from pregnancy-related causes per 100,000 live births. In Australia, which has advanced healthcare, the infant mortality rate is very low, about three deaths per 1,000 live births. Maternal mortality rate is also low, with only around six deaths per 100,000 live births. These numbers reflect the high quality of healthcare available to mothers and babies. Now let's look at Mali. Here the picture is very different. The infant mortality rate is much higher, about 61 deaths per 1,000 live births. Maternal mortality is also alarmingly high, with around 562 deaths per 100,000 live births. These figures highlight the challenges Mali faces in providing adequate health care, especially in rural areas where access to medical facilities and trained professionals is limited. Bangladesh falls somewhere in between. Over the past few decades, the country has made significant improvements in health care, but challenges remain. The infant mortality rate is about 24 deaths per 1,000 live births, and maternal mortality is around 173 deaths per 100,000 live births. While these numbers are better than Mali's, they still indicate significant room for improvement compared to more developed countries like Australia. Next, let's compare literacy rates for men and women. In Australia, literacy rates are nearly universal with over 99% of both men and women able to read and write. This high literacy rate reflects the country's strong education system and equal access to education for all genders. In Mali, the situation is quite different. Literacy rates are much lower, especially for women. About 45% of men in Mali are literate, but only about 25% of women can read and write. This gap is partly due to cultural factors and the limited availability of schools in rural areas, which often results in girls receiving less education than boys. Bangladesh has made significant strides in improving literacy rates, particularly for women. Currently, about 75% of men and 71% of women are literate. This narrowing gap between genders is the result of targeted efforts to improve girls' education though challenges like poverty and cultural norms still present obstacles. Finally, let's look at per capita GDP, which measures the average economic output per person. In Australia, the per capita GDP is quite high, around 57,000 US dollars. This reflects a strong, diversified economy with a high standard of living. In contrast, Mali's per capita GDP is much lower, around 900 US dollars. This huge disparity highlights the economic challenges Mali faces, including reliance on agriculture and limited industrial development, which contribute to widespread poverty. Bangladesh, with a per capita GDP of about 2,500 US dollars, is still considered a developing country, but it has seen rapid economic growth in recent years, driven by industries like textiles and manufacturing. While this is a positive trend, Bangladesh still faces challenges related to poverty and inequality. So, what do these comparisons tell us? Quality of life can vary dramatically depending on where you live. Developed countries like Australia tend to have better outcomes in terms of healthcare, education, and economic opportunities. Developing countries like Mali and Bangladesh, on the other hand, face significant challenges, but they also show the potential for progress especially when investments are made in healthcare, education, and economic development. Understanding these differences helps us see the bigger picture of global inequality, 
and the importance of continued efforts to improve quality of life for everyone, no matter where they live. That's it for today's geography lesson. Keep these comparisons in mind the next time you think about quality of life. And remember, every country has its own challenges and opportunities for making life better for its people.